Okay, um, I haven't even changed out of my church clothes. I just got home and I have, um, I am now locking the door. Um, locked myself in the bathroom so that my three girls don't bother me because I really, really want to do this video and I seriously never wanted to leave church so fast in my life, um, but for a good reason. I seriously had chills up and down my spine as the um, group that um, spoke did like this little mini performance thing and then, oh, it was just amazing. So anyway, it was this group called Rev 5 and they're like a leadership type thing that um, college age kids can go to and it's based in Colorado and they came and um, shared a message with us today at our church and it was just amazing and they talked about how you have to know who you are and once you know your identity that determines what you do never the other way around and um, at first they you know popped up all over the um, sanctuary and um, shared different struggles that um, real life individuals might have, whether it be cutting or bulimia or anorexia or pornography or addiction to video games or sexual abuse or um, lesbianism or being gay or um, feeling unwanted or whatever, you know, struggles that people every day face. And they talked about, you know, the, the things that the world throws at them. And then one by one, they went back and they stood up and they said, I know who I am. And they said their name, like, I am Sarah Ruth Young. And then they went on to redefine themselves as who they are um, because of who God is. And um, that was the whole point of the message was that once you know who God is, um, then you can know who he has called you to be. And God says, because I am, you are. And you can fill in the blank because I am says God, you, my child, are victorious. You are an overcomer. You are powerful. You are joyful. You are at peace. You are a light. You are a dreamer. Um, whatever. You know, there are so many things that I wrote down in my book, but because God says, I am, then I am whoever God says, you know, and he has this destiny and this calling specifically on my life. And he has one specifically on your life too. And, um, it was just so cool to hear that and just, um, just kind of reaffirm, you know, what God has been working on my heart. And at the end of the sermon, the, um, leader of the Rev Five, you know, just said, you know, we're just going to have some time to pray and our students are going to be around the, um, outer parts of the sanctuary here. And if you want, um, to pray with them, they would love to pray for you and, um, if you're open to it, you know, after you talk to him for a bit, they they are going to pray and ask God to for him to give them a word to speak to you on what their impression is that maybe they have a vision that God has laid on their heart for you. And um, you, you might think that's kooky. You might think that's, you know, in way left field or right field or whatever. Um, but it was amazing and, it was, and God was there. And um, he showed up big time and I feel like he not only spoke a message to me, but this word is for all of us um, on It Works and the Fearless page and the whole It Works family. So feel free to share this with your teams and, and everything. But um, as I sat there, you know, I just really felt like God was telling me like my role, my purpose, my calling, the reason that he has placed me on this earth is to inspire others and to call other people out. And I have been set free, so then I am in turn to help free others. And I am to free, help free them from their fears and their doubt and their skepticism and their worries and their anxiety and their worries that they're not enough or worry or fear of what other people are going to think about them or that they're not good enough or that they don't deserve something um, or whatever, you know, um, those fears might be. And I'm getting sick and tired of Satan and the way that he traps us and enslaves us to fear and how fear keeps us from doing all the big, huge, marvelous, wonderful, divine, extraordinary, supernatural things that God has planned for us. He created them in advance for us to do. It says that we are his workmanship um, and that he created good works in advance for us to do and that we are wonderfully and fearfully made and that he has a plan for us. And when we were in our mother's womb, he called us by name and had a plan. And I feel like my purpose on this earth is to help people understand that and to see that and to stir up that fire inside their belly, inside of their soul and know that we have a limited time here on earth and we need to make the most of every single moment that we are given and we need to seize the day. And I really feel like that is, you know, 
our, our goal, it, it works, is to change lives and to friendships, fun, and freedom, and to help people experience the freedom um, that they can have in this life, um, whether it be financial freedom or the freedom to live out their dreams and to help others. And so I really felt like that's kind of what God was telling me. And as we sat there, I asked my husband, who had gone to church last night because he had a meeting, if he had gone and prayed with any of the students last night, if they had told him anything. And he said, no, but I, I really kind of want to. Well, all the students were taken and praying with people, so we went up to Joe, the kind of head guy of the, the group, the adult, who he and his wife kind of lead the Rev 5 in Colorado. And so we went up to, to him, and Lawrence introduced me because um, Lawrence, my husband, and Joe had already met last night. And so he introduced me, and um, you know, Joe just said, okay, well, what do you want me to pray for? And I looked over, and my husband was uh, almost in tears, and I had no idea that he was going to be so emotional. But God has been stirring up something in his heart and um, laying, you know, we don't we don't know what exactly, but maybe saying, hey, there's something more, um, and we don't know exactly what it is yet, but um, we've been asked to go to Ethiopia this summer, and we're stepping out in faith and saying that um, we will go, and you know, I, I kind of told Joe, I said, we're going to go, and we're going to adopt two little boys, and um, you know, my husband and I haven't really talked, you know, finalized that, but that's, that's the prayer of my heart, at least, um, as my children bang on the door. But, um, so we just talked and he prayed for us and he said, um, you know, thank you so much for, for just being real. And you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pray and ask God to, you know, give me a word for you, give me a vision for just a second. And we were, we were quiet for a little bit. And then, um, he said, okay, okay, I got it. He said, now this, this is kind of, kind of weird as a guy, but, um, and it's kind of random, but this is, this is very clearly what I saw the, saw in the Lord give me to tell you guys. And he said, when, um, the Israelites had finished conquering the land and they were dividing it up, um, there was a tribe and he couldn't remember the name of the tribe and I couldn't either, but I knew the story that he was talking about. And in this tribe, the head of the tribe didn't have a son. And so he couldn't pass on his inheritance to his son, but he had seven daughters. And normally in the Jewish culture, um, sadly, a woman didn't really mean anything. And so um, they shouldn't have been given any land, but they had the courage to, um, and that is an important role because courage was a word that God put on my heart today. And before I went to church, I posted three different things about courage. And I had like three or four different posts planned after church too, just of quotes about, about courage. So anyway, but these seven women, these seven daughters had the courage to go before the leaders of Israel and say, Hey, we want land. Give us the portion that is due us. And they did. And, um, that set a precedent for all those who followed behind them. And from that point on, if a man didn't have any sons, then um, something was passed on to his daughter. And so that just changed the whole way that um, Israel Israel dealt with, with girls when there were no sons. And so what Joe said is, okay, that's the story. And this is the message that I have um, that I feel like God is, is saying is behind it. And he said, these are, these are the words that I hear, um, a big ask. Um, and he said, does that mean anything to you? And I, I looked at my husband and I almost started crying and I, and I did cry. And I said, do you, I do know what that means. And I said, do you, you know, I asked Lawrence, I was like, do you, do you know what I'm thinking? And he said, you tell him. And I said, um, with my company, um, my husband and I are eligible for $50,000, um, or more. And bonuses, we are we are charted for diamond and we are charted for double. We just need volume. And that's $50,000 that we can earn by the end of this month. And I have asked Guy already that he would supply all the funds that we need to go to Ethiopia, which is about $6,000 um, for this summer in one paycheck through It Works, which is about a double diamond average paycheck. And I have also asked Guy something even bigger. Um, I have asked him to provide in one paycheck all the funds that we would need for an international adoption. And if you have ever adopted internationally, you know that's a lot, about $30,000. Um, but I truly, truly believe that God can do that. And is that a big ask? You better believe that's a big ask. But you know what? I serve a big, huge God, and he is capable of doing that. And you know what? I have the courage to ask him that, and I have the courage to work hard to make that happen. And what Joe said was that 
my big ask is going to affect all those who come behind me. So my big ask is going to affect my teammates because I'm going to challenge them to have the courage and boldness to get on their knees and have a big ask for God. You know what? Maybe it's the $500 bonus and that's a big ask for you. Or maybe it's the diamond bonus and that's a big ask for you. You know what? Um, and Joe prayed for us after I, after I shared, you know, that our big ask was the $50,000 bonuses. He prayed for us and he said, God, I pray that you would grant them this $50,000 and even more if that is what you would desire. And you know what? I said, yeah, even more. Heck, more can go double and I can go triple and that would be a whole whole bunch more money that I don't even have it calculated yet. But that's a really big ask. But again, I serve a really, really big God. And so as we start this month... Um, and we head into March Madness and we look forward to March 31st with that deadline for those bonuses. Um, I just want to challenge you to first and foremost know who you are and your identity is not in what you do, um, but it is, it is in who you are um, and that is going to define what you do. And, I, and I, once you get a clear vision of who you are, which I think ultimately needs to be grounded in who God is. So get that straight and understand who God is and who you are in Him. And then go before Him and have the courage to have a big ass. And I am just so excited to see what's going to happen. Um, my theme verse the past couple months has been Ephesians 3.20. Now to Him who is able to do infinitely more than anything we could ask or imagine. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Woo! I am excited. I am fired up, and that is why I couldn't wait to leave church because I wanted to share that with you. So go and have an awesome start to this March, and I'm going to go take care of my baby girl who's crying. But I love you, and I'm excited, so excited to see what God is going to do this month on our team.